I've always enjoyed filming outside if it's not raining, but it can be really difficult when filming people to get correct exposure and pleasant looking shadows. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you some tips and some tools that have helped me get better shots when filming outdoors and in the sun. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more gear reviews and tutorials, and press the bell for notifications so that you don't miss any videos. I'm also on Instagram, so head over there for some behind the scenes content, announcement, and some bloopers, and I'll see you over there. Now there are lots of variables when filming outside, such as position of the sun, harsh shadows, time of day, moving clouds, background and subject placement versus the direction of the sun, and loads more. Sometimes, depending on what scenario you're filming in, you've got no choice but to just make do. But when you do have a little bit of extra time and money to set up the scene properly, here are some things to think about that will make a huge difference. Now you don't need these things, but they certainly will add to the production element and make your life a little bit easier. The couple of tools that you can use are a variable ND filter or a polarizer filter and reflectors and diffusers. And I'll talk a little bit more about these things later on in the video. Now the first thing to do if you don't want to spend the extra money or if you don't have an extra pair of hands to help you out on a shoot, what you can do is compensate for the brightness of the sun by turning down your exposure. Instead of altering the shutter speed, I opt for changing the aperture. Now the compromise is that you don't get the nice blurry background, but it means that you don't have a blown out scene. If you do need that blurry background, what you'll need to do is purchase an ND filter. Now it doesn't have to break the bank, you can get really affordable ones from Amazon and I'll leave some links down in the description below so you can choose one that suits your budget. So an ND filter will stop as much light coming in through your lens and into your sensor. This means that you can keep your shutter speed and all your camera settings as they are so you've got creative control over what you want the scene to look like. It's basically like having sunglasses for your lens. I've, I mean, how many times have we heard that saying? But if you've not heard it before, then there you go. It's a good analogy, so I may as well use it. The next tip is to keep the sun behind the subject. If they're directly facing the sun, you'll get harsh shadows under the eyes, nose, and chin. It's also uncomfortable for them, and they'll be squinting. <laughs> squinting Tarantino. So if you don't need something specific in the background, try and keep the sun behind the subject. This will keep the light off the subject's face and eliminate those harsh shadows. Now this doesn't have to be directly behind the person. You can move around a little bit to light one side, but be careful not to go too far, otherwise you'll get half an overexposed face and a half underexposed face, unless that's the look that you're going for. Now the next tip is what makes a lot of difference actually. Make sure that you expose for the background and not the subject. Because what happens is if you've got a well lit subject but the background is way overexposed, it's distracting to look at. So the key is to expose for the background. Yeah, I know what you're thinking, this will make your subject too dark, but that brings me on to the next point. You'll use a reflector as a key light source. So make sure when using a reflector, you're coming from the opposite side of wherever the sun is. So what you'll have then is you'll have the light on one side. Let me try and explain using this. Let's say this is the sun and this is my reflector here. The sun's coming down from this angle, so I've got it slightly to one side. I've now placed the reflector directly opposite. So you've got the sun behind on this side. It's almost like a a hair light and then you've got the reflector bouncing light onto this side so you've created depth there you've got nice key light on this side and then the hair light on this side rather than having the sun on this side and your reflector acting as a key light on the same side it just creates a little bit more depth so you've got light dark light does that make sense Another point to consider is don't hold your reflector below because that's unnatural. You wanna hold it above like a real light source would be, i.e. the sun. So make sure that you've got that nice and high and it's bouncing the light down on the subject because that's the most natural looking light. Now moving closer and further away will obviously change the intensity of how much light is being cast on the person. So move where you need to be. If you want loads of light, get closer. If you don't want as much, just put it a little bit further back. Obviously this also depends on how much space you've got as well. Now if you do have to face the other way because 
it might be that you have to have a certain thing in the background. Try and get into the shade if possible, or use a diffuser so that the sun isn't as harsh. This tip also helps if you've got clouds going over the sun every now and then. So one minute you've got direct sunlight and then the next minute there's a cloud over. It's gonna change the look. So what you wanna do is keep it consistent. If that's happening, this is a great tip. Just hold the diffuser over the subject and keep it there throughout the whole scene and then you know you're gonna have the same look for the whole of that shot. And you can get larger flag panel diffusers as well. So if, you, if you're working with more than one person or if you need to cover a larger space, then these are ideal. Carrying all this extra equipment and thinking about all these different things means that there's a lot to handle on your own. So another tip, if you can do it, if you've got enough room in the budget for it, is to get somebody to help or to get a team of people to help you. There's a lot to think about, obviously. If you're focusing on filming, for example, it's good to have somebody else focusing on the diffusion or bouncing the light and just other things like that so that you can concentrate on one thing. So that's a handy tip if you've got the option. If not, though, you might have to bring a stand to put the reflectors on. But obviously this means if you need to move within your scene, though, always better to have somebody holding that so they can move around. Another really handy tip that's not so obvious is to use a tighter focal length. If you've got a wide angle lens, you're gonna show more of the sky in your frame. Whereas if you zoom in on your frame, you're choosing less of that sky to focus in on. So there's less chance of it being overexposed, especially when you're facing the sun. Overcast days are so much easier to film in because the clouds act as giant diffusers for the sun and you get more natural looking shadows. We could go into so much depth when talking about exposure and tools to use when filming outside, but I think you'll agree that this is a lot to get started with. And these basic principles apply to a larger scale production as well. So if you go out and try these and practice these as much as possible and experiment as well, experiment with different angles of the light, different types of diffusion, different ways of bouncing the light. I'd love to know how you're getting on, so leave me a comment down below with your favorite tip from this video. And if you've tried any of these before, what works for you, what do you like doing, let me know. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it's given you something to think about when you're next filming outside, especially now the weather's getting a bit better. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more gear reviews and tutorials. And uh, I think that's it. Have a good one. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching.